many thanks, Professor Sadoway. This is heavy stuff. This is time to take a breath. For the next, the next heavy and erudite exposition. In fact, it is my distinct honor to introduce Professor Jeffrey Steinfeld of the Chemistry Department, one of MIT's most eminent faculty. Professor Steinfeld has been at MIT since he was in kindergarten. <laughs> he received his BS in 1962, his PhD in 1965, and joined the faculty in 1966. Match that one, class of 212. <laughs> Professor Steinfeld's research is focused on the molecular spectroscopy of triangular fields, molecular energy transfer, and particularly on laser methods for remote sensing of available triangular food over cosmic distances. <laughs> this last is of great interest to the MIT Dining Committee trying to feed hungry students at no cost. <laughs> he is author of many textbooks including Molecules, Radiation and Triangular Foods, published by MIT Press with a Chinese translation. <laughs> He was chairperson of the notable Symposium on Future Trends in Triangular Foods held last year. His present teaching emphasis is on concepts of sustainability and environmental responsibility across the curriculum, including serving on the highly secretive and therefore most important Energy and Triangular Foods Education Task Force. <laughs> Professor Steinfeld. Thank you, and I would like to thank Professor Sadoway for <clears throat> raising an important question to which you will now get the correct answers. <laughs> <laughs> because we are going to uh, consider whether the latke or the hamatash is more sustainable, and Don, there is a method for answering that question. It's called life cycle analysis. Uh, how many of you have had experience with that? A few. How many have had no experience with it? Uh, well, the ones who have had the experience can tell the ones who haven't had the experience, and then I can leave. Uh, <laughs> it simply is a way of accounting all of the energy and material inputs at every stage of production, processing, and use of the product, and also all of the waste emissions, particularly waste emissions, emission of waste following consumption of said product. Well, maybe we won't go into that right now, but afterwards you'll find the rooms you need just outside. Uh, another way of asking it is what is the environmental footprint of one latka or one hamantash. Of course, if you step on a latka or on a hamantash, for that matter, you'll get one big messy footprint, but that's neither here nor there. So, <clears throat> we really need to look at the actual process for producing both of these items, and we will look at both of them. So, for these triangular objects, well, you do seem to need a lot of butter, and to get butter you need milk, and to get milk you need cows, and cows do stand around and emit a lot of methane. Uh, uh, so that could be a problem, but that will all come into the accounting later. You need a few other items, and then of course you need the material in the uh, center, in the inside, which might be jam, or it might be poppy seeds, which would, in fact, be very sustainable for Afghanistan. <laughs> <laughs> but <clears throat> to make these triangular objects, you do have to heat an oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And then the question is, uh, how do you heat your oven? Do you heat it using gas? Do you heat it using electricity? If you use electricity, is the electricity coming from 
uh, <clears throat> solar panels? Is it coming from a wind turbine? Is it coming from an integrated gasification combined cycle power plant? Uh, <clears throat> or are you getting your electricity from a coal-fired power plant? If it's a coal-fired power plant, a shutdown of you. <laughs> but what about these, uh, well, circular is, circ to call this object circular is giving it the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> uh, but you need potatoes, as has been pointed out. Potatoes, you <clears throat> reach down into the ground and pick one up. Um, well, that might be considered sustainable. Uh, a little bit of onion, a few eggs. Well, you need chickens for that. That could be a problem. But they require a large amount of oil. And, of course, producing and uh, <clears throat> distributing and consuming oil is a very complicated process. <laughs> and in fact, it is strictly controlled, it is strictly controlled by ALPEC. ALPEC, the organization of latke producing and eating conspirators. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so we have to take all of these into account, all of these factors into account, and come up with a life cycle inventory matrix for the Hamantash and for the life. And as you can clearly see from these results, <laughs> the Hamantash is far more sustainable than the Latke. Yes? <laughs> is somebody not convinced by these data? All right, then we will have to go, then we will have to resort to experimental evidence, which I happen to have right here. Uh, <clears throat> this was, <clears throat> this originally started out as a bronze latke and a bronze hamantash, which I received on a former such occasion. Maybe somebody in the back row can't quite see it, so here on the giant screen, uh, you have this item, <coughs> photograph taken within the past few days. But you'll notice that this is missing, and that was because shortly after I received this, uh, our environmental health and safety officer came by <laughs> and inspected it and demanded that what the latke be immediately disposed of as hazardous waste. <laughs> Which I think uh, is contrary to some of the assertions that we heard a little earlier this evening. But the Humantash, after six years, is in very good shape. <laughs> well, it's turned a little greenish. It is kind of green. Wouldn't you say it's green? It's green. It's uh, impartial green. Moder moderator? I would say impartially, but it's green. It is impartially green, <laughs> which proves, which proves that the latke is much less sustainable and the homotage is far more sustainable because, as we know, MIT is going green. 